Uh, yeah, man, it's the one only DJ Chase, man, the host of the pregame party miss podcast on 20 podcast networks, Monday nights, Dynasty Radio, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., man. You know what it is, man. Uh, Divergent Supreme Radio, we got the one, the only, the soulful, the classy, the fedoras, everything like that. You know, the, the jazz rap, conscious rap, Juanito Jones in the building. What's going on, brother? Hey, thank you so much for uh, having me. I uh, hope you're well and safe during these crazy times. Yeah, yeah, it's always something. <laughs> right, right. But you know what it is, man. You know how we do. We still keep our head above water, keep God first. So, you know exactly. how that Yeah, man. So, uh, New York City, the Bronx is on the finest Juanito Jones, man. First and foremost, man, we're going to talk about your background, get people to know who you are. Because, you know, a lot of times yeah, people yeah. don't, you know, they, they see artists and hear artists, but they don't know really know about the artists. So, first right. and foremost, where you, what part of the Bronx are you from, brother? Um, so I was originally born and raised uh, in the Zariga area by Castle Hill. Mm. Um, I've been living in the city now for like almost five years. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it was a pretty interesting place to grow up in. Yeah. That's funny. I'm actually from Soundview. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Yeah, I'm six from the line. Soundview. Yeah, Six Line. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. from Soundview. Yeah, okay. so yeah Soundview, definitely. man. I used to, I used to go to Soundview. I used to. The only reason I used to go to Soundview when I was a kid is yeah. uh, I used to get off the train and go to that that like place by the water. As soon mm. as you get off, you know, you see it's like you have picnic areas. It almost looks like Pelham Bay Park, but it's Soundview. Yeah, um, I used to go over there and just be crazy. It's, yeah, uh, Soundview is an interesting spot. Yeah, they're very interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah they even got that. Uh, they they got that one hotel, uh, the Sheraton. Yeah, shadiest yeah. hotel out there yeah yeah, yeah definitely that. definitely definitely you too young to know about that if you know if you know you know if you was outside <laughs> you was outside man but um you know definitely thank you for being on the show man you know growing up it's growing true. up in the bronx like because you're such a soulful artist you're such a you know classy cl- you're a classic artist as, a, as i should say you know how did growing up growing up in the bronx how did that influence you um, I mean, you know, I've always been the type of cat to like, I was mostly home predominantly all my childhood. Um, I went out, I got a late start to life. And then uh, I feel like once I turned like 17, 18, mm. is when I started getting lit out the house. Uh, and I was just like, I was that kid to be out as long as I could before I got that call to come back. Um, mm. I've always... I've always been a uh, interesting cat. You know, I, I used to like all of my friends in the hood were like all gang bangers and like, hmm. you know what I'm saying? All of that, like the yeah. hardest cats. And then they have like me in the cut, you know what I'm saying? And they're yeah. like, you know, I always, uh, <clears throat> they always uh, gravitated toward me. And, you know, I hung out with like a lot of interesting cats that you probably wouldn't assume I would hang out with <laughs> in that yeah, time. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, the Bronx is interesting. You know, I feel like, uh, I saw a lot of nightlife when I was out and, and um, you know, being raised in the Bronx gave me the opportunity to just be quick on my toes and just, you know, be aware of my surroundings because mm-hmm. you be in the wrong place at the wrong time in the Bronx, it's over for you. Definitely, definitely. I'm a Bronx native, so yeah. I know it is, man. You know, and out of all things, you know, because you have a very interesting background as well, too. Like, you know, you've been in this industry for some time and, you know, in yeah. the for a minute, you know what I'm saying? So, who, like, what made you want to become an artist? Because like I said, a lot of people become artists. They just be like, they want the, clip, the quick money or they want the quick, yeah. the quick, you know, the quick fame or whatever the case may be. But your journey is a little different than that. What made you want to, be- want to become an artist first and foremost? Um, I, I think I just always was gravitated towards creativity. And I've been more of the type of person that I never really speak much to folks. I always like, you know, writing down ideas. Um, and it's funny because I initially wanted to be a singer. Um, like everyone in my family tell you, they probably thought I was gonna grow up and like be a singer. Mm. And then a puberty hit and that wasn't gonna work for me. So, uh, <laughs> that voice changed you know, real quick. I, yeah, then I fell in love with just like the art of rap and like, you mm. know, hip hop and just being able to like play with words and connect with folks on a different type of level. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I think just, being able to be a creative and connect to people on a level that other things you can't really connect with. And music is such a powerful tool. Mm. You use it the right way. And um, yeah, I think life itself just really motivated me. And I always just was musically inclined to mm. my thing. So I was just like, I might as well just do this. Yeah. And I, it was something I love doing. Yeah, yeah. 
Definitely, definitely, man. And who did you listen to growing up? Like, who was some of your influence that you could say, like, because, like I said, you're such a classic artist, so you yeah. can probably, but, but you still have that that street element to you. You could tell, like, you, it yeah. comes from a certain place. Like, what um, yeah. what artist did you listen to? So, um, I didn't growing up. I never listened to hip hop or rap. Like, oh wow, okay. I was not a rap. Yeah, I just it just fell naturally as I got older. Um, yeah. So I grew up listening to like soul, doo wop, um, mm. jazz, classical music, um, Italian opera. Um, I just literally like rap wasn't my forte. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. that I hated it. It was just like you know that's not what I grew up listening to. Um, as a kid, I grew up chopping up vinyls. Um, I listened to a lot of Kanye West production side. Um, not necessarily like his actual music, but I just told songs to produce. I fell in love with that. So I started off like as a producer and then I made my way into just like figuring everything out. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, man, I always grew up listening to like really good, like classics and just like mm -hmm. different music. That's not like that. You got to dig into the crates. Put them yeah, 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 yeah. And I feel definitely. like I feel like once I like got older into my teens um, mm -hmm. and I started getting exposed, you know, social media and, and, and the Internet and everything. And I just started like going backtracking to like now. Mm -hmm. And going through the years of, of, of the evolution of, of hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. Got you, got you, man. Now, previously, you were actually signed to um, Universal Music Group. You know, how did yeah. that? Well, first and foremost, how did that come about? Like, you know, how did that happen? Um, honestly, it was just right place, right time. Mm. Uh, so I, um, when I lived in the Bronx, this lady that um, lived downstairs. She told me like one of her friends, she didn't even like let me know it was like her ex-cousin. She was like one of my friends is he does management for music. Mm -hmm. Yada yada yada. Long story short. Um one day I was like, I coincidentally was just like walking outside. Yeah, and the yeah. man pulled up on me and he was like, Yo, you want to eat And I was like, Yeah. And then he let me know I'm at this AR for Universal. He was like, you know, my, one of my friends is telling me about you. And then he had me like spit a verse for him. Mm, Next wow. day, we're wearing my best friend's crib, like going over my album, and then left and right people and everybody was talking to each other. And then after that, I had signed a, a year um, distribution deal with mm. Universal, and it was a really, really great experience. I was Dope. able to um, tour to different cities. I, I opened up for Rock Kim in a couple of spots. I, I Dope. Dope. Funk Fest. Um, yeah, it was a really cool experience. It was really dope. And I met with a lot of people um, that I still know to this day and then mm. just built some really strong relationships. That's dope. That's fire, man. And, you know, I want to ask you this question, too, because, like I said, I like your music. I'm a you, you make this type of music that I, I want to work with you one day. Like, I like your music. It's totally like real low fi real like it just gets to the point. It's really potent music. Like, there's no filler with your Thank music, you. right? Um, you know, do you like being independent better or you like being signed better? What do you like? Um, I mean, I think when I did, when I was signed and I saw the music business for what, what it was, mm. uh, everyone has their own, you know, level of success and, and, and what they all want to achieve. I feel like everyone... Uh, by default, they all are like, I'm going to be big. I'm going to be on, on all the stages. I'm going to be on TV. But a lot of people don't have that realistic view that that's not, it's a very small percentage of people that actually get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like when you are signed, you don't have as much control. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you, you might see a lot of money, um, but you don't realize the business aspect of it. Um, I feel like being independent, you do have all the freedom and especially if you're doing everything mm. out of your own pocket um yeah. a lot of people also don't realize a lot of artists don't realize that you have to spend a lot of money in this yep. business to get to where you want and i think sure. that a lot of artists don't make that type of investment yeah. because you know sometimes they don't think in the long term you know i mean mm. so yeah i think independent um being independent with just a good support system behind you um and obviously some powerhouses behind you on the mm. independent level that could really get you to where you want to be. Mm. Being, you know, being signed was dope. Um, I just didn't continue my contract because they just wanted me to make certain type of music that I wasn't yeah. comfortable with. And I yeah. think the last straw I had was when we did a show in Marietta mm. and I was at some strip club. It was, it was a strip club. It was just, it, it seemed like it was a strip club, but I was in there and it was packed and I was performing just this song that I didn't even want to write and didn't even want to perform. 
They just had me like performing this one song. And I was just like, man, why am I in this place? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, got, they got like me in a whole suit in in like this like a strip joint. club joint yeah yeah looking crazy I yeah like i was like yeah so i think yeah yeah independent for for me yeah it's just gives me the opportunity to just do whatever i want for sure for sure man and and you know what's crazy you actually segue right to my next question do you ever feel like you know what i'm saying sometimes because like i said you have real jazz conscience not it's not it never leave jazz rap it's more just like i said it's just more like it's more potent, it's more, you know, authentic classical hip hop, you know, in the sense of yeah. saying, you know, but because you generally, you generally blend in, I'm listening to your production too, because you produce your own music as well. Like yeah. the samples and just like certain sounds that you put and like even the tempos that you make, you really make really tempo based driven music. Do you yeah. feel like, you know what, did you ever have to compromise? Like, do you ever feel like in your mind, like, you know what, I got to make one of them nasty trap songs or, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. Um, I have and I can. Um, I think the beauty of being able to produce my music and being able to make music the way I want to is I can make music that's current and mm -hmm. it still sounds different and mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like what you hear on the radio. You know, I could um, like, for example, my new album I'm working on is, 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 is a hard, aggressive, raw hip hop album. And there's a couple trap songs on there that is all jazz trap. So I think that being able to know my sound and being able to produce hand in hand just works. So I don't think I don't feel like I've ever had to do anything out of my realm that has made me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I've definitely made beats and made songs that aren't necessarily the type of music I've been making for so long, mm -hmm. but I'm able to still put in those influences and those sounds to just make it sound completely different. Got you. That's what's up. That's a dope answer. And, you know, being a, your own producer, does it actually help you, um, like, with your recording as well? Because a lot of artists, like, because I engineer, you see, I'm in my studio now, you know, a lot of artists, they don't know how to, they don't know how to work with the microphone. They don't know how to control their voice. Do you feel like being a producer helps you, like, record your own music personally? Um, Yeah, I feel, I, I think that, I think that when you do a lot of your own things, it gives you just room to know exactly what you want to do. Um, and especially being a producer, you know, I know exactly what works for me and I know exactly what sounds I'm using. And once I make the beat, I immediately have the song and I know exactly how I want to layer everything up. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it helps for me personally. It, it just helps being a producer because in the long run, I have everything exactly the way that I want it to sound. Got you, got you. And let's fan out. Let's nerd out for a second, man. First and foremost, because I got to ask for my producers. I love my production. What do you use to produce uh, your music? So it's funny you ask. And I think it's surprising when I tell most people. Um, for a long time, I've only made beats on my phone. Um, on your phone? I, wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't use laptop i don't use consoles mm -hmm. uh, um it, it isn't until recently april of last year i started making beats on an ipad um yeah okay. so that's now all i make I, but I, now i alternate i make beats on either my phone or an ipad um i've always said it's never about um what you have it's about how you use it um mm -hmm. okay. you know because i i've I, I grew up um having npcs and stuff but mm. I think I wanted to do something a little bit different in mm. terms of like, man, what can I bring to the table that's mm. just different from everybody else? Because, you know, if you're traveling and stuff, you can't bring your, your motif or your Triton or yeah, your, your yeah, NPC yeah. studio yeah. or all them wires of those speakers. So I literally just have my, my my iPad case, my phone, I bring my headphones and I have my little uh, MIDI keyboard and I'm good to go. For uh, sure, man. So yeah, all my beats and stuff I've made on my phone or on my iPad. That's what's up. That's I never heard that before. That's definitely dope. Like I, I like because I yeah. use the um I use the machine MK Mini. I mean MK3. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And that that's my baby. I can't I can't even mm -hmm. like fathom making beats without it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you feel like it's easier to make beats on the phone? Like oh why like what's what made you prefer the phone? Um, can the conveniency mm -hmm. uh and it was just so different. You know because I was like, you know I grew up. Um, my first gift as a kid was a uh, was a uh, MPC. And then from there, I had gotten a, a XF8 motif, and then mm -hmm. I got a Triton, and I was like, "Yo, this this stuff is dope," but I can't take this everywhere. I remember yeah, when Triton I used to go is huge. To the Triton is huge. Yeah, or or the Triton's motif. Huge. I remember when yeah, I used the to motif, go to this yeah. lab. I remember when I worked out of this lab in in Harlem, and I was like bringing this huge 
Key you had to trigger it. Like, yeah, you had to trigger it. You had to trigger, like, trigger this, it and all that. It was too much. Yeah, yeah, I was like, this ain't gonna work. So then um, I had came across um, the IMPC at first. That's what I was making beats off of, which is an app from a guy. Mm-hmm. And it's just a digital MPC that you do on your phone. And you can layer it and sequence and do everything on it. I was like, yo, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. And and I just mastered it. I just became the master of it. Um, and then from there, I was like, man, I got to make... Can I do something simpler than this and still make some fire um, production? And then from there, I I came across GarageBand mm. and I just fell in love with the how how easy it was to do and and mm. and I sample like I do everything on GarageBand. I sample, I chop, I mix, I master, I do everything. Oh, I think it's stuff. personally. I think it's personally easier. But there's a lot of people that I'll tell you that they look at that and they'll be like, "Yo, this is so difficult to understand." Yeah. So it's really about you know what you prefer. Copy, copy, man. Now uh, we're gonna get into some music. Your new project, twenty twenty, yes. uh, very personal record. I was actually listening to it just now. Um, you got, you know, one of my favorite cuts is uh, "Have You Ever," and you have oh, this well, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that song. And then you had uh, "Dear Mama," which is a really personal record, you know, and a very transparent record. So, what? How did you feel making that song? Because it was really deep and really, like I said, really yeah. personal. Yeah. Um. So I mean. I've always been the, the artist to make music that's just like full of substance, that's relatable, that's not something that after a hundred times listening to it, you like get so annoyed with it because like, damn, I keep hearing this. Um, and a lot of all my music is like very personal. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm a human being, I'm not gonna make music about something that other people, that like the average person isn't out here popping uh, bottles and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and and causing money. Because it's not. true, it's like, it's not. like not. the average person, is not but the average person is going through heartbreak the average person is going through loss the average mm. person is going through 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 so many things so um mm. that record um dear mama um so much happened to me in, in in the year 2020 and i said i'm gonna put all of this that happened to me in just five songs and and um december 2019 is when i had lost my grandmother mm. and um you know i was like man i gotta put this in there just because it just would fit smoothly but yeah every song on there is like something that happened in my life in 2020 that changed my life Mm -hmm. yeah yeah nah for sure for sure definitely man and like i said have you ever you produced that as well you obviously say you produced that as well yeah i produced everything yeah yeah. have you ever is that gonna be the same i think as a dj i love that record i need the mp everybody is that 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 it's funny because i was talking to my fiance about it and it's funny like the tracks that you like and Mm -hmm. you're like these are the singles someone else or a majority of other people are like nah this is it so um have you ever is one of the singles the other singles trust you again gotcha. but um have you ever have you ever is like my most streamed song right now so um mm-hmm. i'm definitely shooting a video for have you ever but yeah have fire. you ever is, is one of those leading singles yeah fire man and you know as like i said you you you're one of the, the dopest interviews that I had in a minute. Like, you know what I'm saying? You very you, you answer the questions very direct. And you're very in tune with your music. Now, you know, we have different media. We have Instagram. We have Facebook. We have social media music. And you, like I said, you are pre-all social media. So, you know, how do you feel about, like, the TikTok takeover as far as, like, you know what? Because we say compromising in itself, but just as far as compromising yeah. doing, like, a TikTok song, do you feel like you have to make one of those stupid TikTok songs or a challenge or something like that? So I personally don't really mess with social media. The gotcha. only thing I have is Instagram, and I only use Instagram for to promote my, my production and my music, and that's it. I'm not on anything else. I deleted every single form of social media I have. I feel you. you I feel, know, I'm, I'm going through that, too. Yeah, I'm going through that now. It's so time-consuming. You and mental up, health. Yeah, mental health, yeah. You're scrolling through, like, just people's Instagram that I'm like, why am I doing, like, w- w- like this person is not helping me at any point. Yeah. TikTok too, I personally can be a type of person out here just recording yeah, videos. It's weird, it's weird just, like, bro. It's weird for me personally. Um, nah, I've, I've, I've always stuck to just my gut and, and what I know it will work in the long run because at some point these things are going to die out, you know? Yeah. Like TikTok, it's not like TikTok is new. TikTok's been around for, been a, for long a long time. time. Yeah, it was sound, they sound just, they, yeah, just, they just renamed it. Yeah, they just they just, mm. just renamed it and, and then just started becoming hot. So, you know, mm. you got to think about like trends die out at some point and gotcha. you have to uh, reinvent. So that's, that's the way I'm always thinking. I'm always like, man, how can I stay new and, and then one step ahead of the game for sure man and what's your favorite what's your favorite track of 2020 like you always listening to everybody else what's your favorite track 
Um, my favorite track is Trust You Again, for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, um, and then before we get out of here, man, uh, you have any shows coming up? I definitely want to ask you about some shows because you look, you like you give a good dope performance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hope I do, man. That's always the intention going on stage. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm still on the edge about performing still. I don't, I personally just don't feel comfortable performing yet. Um, gotcha. With this whole COVID thing. Um, so just like, we, in the meantime, until everything clears out, I've just been doing promo and interviews, and, and, and um, I'm currently working on a new album mm. that, that I'm almost done um, recording. And I have three videos I'm shooting that I'm releasing before December, because once December hits, I'm doing a whole year long promo of this new album I'm working on. So yeah, that's, mm. that's right now like my main focus. Shows will yeah. probably come at some point next year, if, if this happens to ever clear up. Like I said, I, I at my day job, I work for the post office. So who at this rate with these stupid people out here, you never know what's going to happen, bro. Right, right, right. <laughs> Unfortunately, I hate to say it like that. But man, for sure, yeah. man. And, and, and before we get out of here, you have any... What would you tell an artist right now? Because like I said, you're a seasoned vet in a sense. You've been signed. You've been not signed. What would, what is one, one piece of advice you would give an artist that says, you know what? I want a deal. I want a deal. Or I want to be independent. What was one piece of advice you would give any artist that come up to you and ask you that? Um, ideally, I always tell cats that are like, I tell them, ask yourself, what do you want to end up doing? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because you can get a anybody can get a record. Deal. Like, it's not hard to get signed. <laughs> like, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. There's like so many people that are signed, but there's also so many people that are shelved. Um, and like getting a deal, it's like a is a whole business is attached to it, and it's like you get a deal with a line of credit, and if you don't pay that back, you're keeping all your money. Um, and then you could, you know, you could get all this money and not be famous and just be like some dude that has all this money that really owes it back, or you could be independent and really make your way up. So um, I think you should just be realistic with yourself and mm -hmm. really make that real assessment. Like, am I really like? where am I in terms of being close to this actual goal? Because a lot of people don't make that self-assessment of like, man, can this really take off? Or can this really, can I really do this for the rest of my life without doing anything else? You know, for and sure. I think once they start being real with themselves and realizing, uh, you know, this is, I can do this. I got. I can put all this money up without an issue. Mm -hmm. Then they'll more or less know that path that they want to go. But again, everybody has their own, preference you know i'm not gonna say that this is better than the other i could just say off personal experience um, mm. i personally would just remain independent and and you know you can you have more flexibility and you can really have that creative control that you want and you can also meet cats also that are major and not have that weird conflict of like you got to go through your label and whatnot you know yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And before we get out of here, I know you I know you produce your own music, man, but how can any of my producers get like send you beats? Cause I definitely want to send you. I got a um I guess you got two beats I want to send you. I think you'll fit like a glove on. And I definitely would yeah. love to work with you and like to meet you, you know what I'm saying? Being linked yeah, up or something sure. like that in the city. For um sure. how can anybody reach you as far as like want to send you beats, anything like that? Yeah, um, you can hit me on Instagram. That's like I'm on that all day. Instagram is who is Juanito. Um I literally post you'll mostly see me uh, posting all of my beats and now I'm starting to like just put all of my music on there just because I'm promoting the EP and the album but yeah hit me on there my email's on there too um, I just fixed it all up so you, it has like my contact email but um, yeah. yeah 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 Instagram Instagram uh, you can reach me I'll, I'll respond I'm not one of those people that is weird and doesn't respond for yeah. like two months and then it's like oh just saw your message like I, I'm pretty quick on like responding copy man uh, Juanito Jones man missed 101,000 followers but I don't do social media Juanito <laughs> Jones super superstar oh, Juanito Jones man <laughs> nah man thank you for sure for coming on the podcast man sorry about the delay I had a, no, that's you know, so I, good. Yeah, I had a family emergency so I gotta go deal with that but um so you know good. what it is man Juanito Jones man shine yourself out man plug anything you got man plug everything let's get it yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, follow me on uh, Instagram, who is Juanito. Uh, I have the latest EP out 2020 on all major stream platforms. Hoping to drop uh, three videos before December. And I'm currently working on my new album called Drone AF, which will drop December 15, 12 track album, fully produced by me as well. And uh, it'll be something to look forward to. But in the meantime, stream, stream 2020. 
There we go. You have it. Uh, Juanito Jones, man. Once again, it's DJ Chase. Thank you, brother, for coming on the podcast, man. Yes, it's gonna sir. Be on, on all me. the podcast networks. On going to be on five radio stations. So you're gonna get you gonna get some promo. You're gonna get the Instagram clips going. We're gonna get all that, man. Perfect. Juanito Perfect. Jones, Perfect. man. It's the pregame party miss podcast with DJ Chase. Subscribe YouTube DJ Chase TV on that YouTube. Um, Instagram underscore DJ Chase. Uh, TikTok D A Real DJ Chase. Uh, Dynasty Radio Monday nights eight p.m. to nine p.m. Uh, Divergent Supreme Radio. Uh, uh, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Monday nights as well too. Triple Up Radio, a few radio stations. We out there. We locked in. You know this man is DJ Chase, the pregame party miss podcast. Gia. DJ Chase TV. It's official. It's official. Come on. Locked in with DJ Chase on the pregame party mix podcast.